ministry that will last must not joke with media. It is a critical harm of the gospel, so much so that the master himself employed it. We never know where the clinic of Dr. Luke is, but everyone is reading the book of Luke today just because he decided to drop the stethoscope and pick up the headphone. Imagine a world without the Bible, a print media. Even the Bible is here, yet we still have several things to grapple with. Makes me wonder if it was not gathered by dedicated hands. Media, though multifaceted, print, audiovisual, etc., is a work and a calling. No one can resist the power of media. If you run away from TV and radio, the billboard is staring at you from the roadside. The world has long employed this to propagate a evil intentions. Yet, the church seems indifferent to it. It is not that the church has not been doing anything prior to the COVID-19 era. She has, but it has never been enough. With my interactions with some churches across the country, I discovered that media was not deliberately abandoned, so to say, but because of its demands in terms of finance. Of course, acquiring some equipment could be expensive. However, it is not all about the expensive equipment. If we can manage what we have effectively with dedicated hands behind them, the work will move. After all, who would think an ordinary catapult would have killed Goliath? Also, many churches are not encouraged to keep investing in media because of mishandling and underutilization of equipment. In fact, we have instances where there are equipment yet the people are not ready to give themselves to work. We have disdained the media work too much and for too long. The obvious fact is, COVID-19 is here and the church must continue. In Micah chapter 4 verse 1, the Bible says, But in the last days it shall come to pass, that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and the people shall flow unto it. There are many prophecies about the last days, of which this is part. Therefore, it must be fulfilled. Looking at this verse of the Bible, though it has its literally meaning, it is as though the mountain of the house of the Lord is the church, while the top of the mountain is the internet. In the age that Micah was, when the Lord revealed this thing to him, he couldn't have understood the word internet, but he captured it as the top of the mountains, that is, on air. And if you look around everywhere, Almost all the churches are now on air. At least, WhatsApp group is also on air. Remember, the master told us that the gospel will be preached everywhere and then the hand shall come. The question is, how will it come to pass in such a situation like this when movement is restricted, if not on the internet? We cannot and we must not joke with the power of media. If we must affect the next generation, the church must go out to meet them on the internet. The approach must be smart and swift. It is not possible to birth the next generation if we don't accept them. Coming out with messages of condemnation will not help. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, And when Nataliah, the mother of Hazael, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. But Jehoshiba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Hazael, took Joash, the son of Hazael, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber from Ataliah, so that he was not slain. At the instance of Hazael's death, Ataliah, his mother, arose and destroyed all the seed royal and sat on the throne for six years, ruling the house of Judah. But Jehoshiba was smart enough to break into the cell and rescue Joash from the hands of the executioner. The cell today is a cell phone and the internet in the hands of the younger generation. If the church will not go and meet them there, let it be said that Atliah is already waiting to destroy them. 
Can we count the number of lives that have been destroyed on the internet? Many of our children encountered death on their phones. The church must awake from our slumber. Here are a few strategies that the enemy used in our day. Beauty, pleasure, deceit, addiction, fear, and false promise. For all of this, the church must confront beauty with glory. We know that beauty fades away, but the glory of Christ is eternal. Addiction could be tackled with commitment or consecration. Those who have become addicted to porn, gambling, etc. must be confronted with such content that could bring them on their knees and therefore becoming committed to Christ. The seed can be countered by plainness and transparency. There are palpable fear of post-COVID-19 era, loss of job, famine, etc. But we must let the people see the hope that we have in Christ via our content on the internet. As per false promise, we all know that our Father in heaven is not a man that should lie, neither the son of man that should repent. Finally, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24 verses 45 to 47, the message translation, who here qualifies for the job of overseeing the kitchen? A person the master can depend on to feed the workers on time each day. Someone the master can drop in on unannounced and always find him doing his job. A God-blessed man or woman. I tell you, it won't be long before the master will put this person in charge of the whole operation. As the Lord committed the media ministry into your hands, do not look down on it or be down considering people of intimidating CV or juicy positions. Actually, we cannot all be on the pulpit. Be focused, diligent, and resilient. In your hands lie a lethal weapon with which to confront the enemy headlong. Remember, the master rewards faithfulness. Keep toiling. Shalom. Stephen Adiagum.